things have have souls too like you know a uh, guy handcrafts this amazing knife and like that thing has his essence in it yeah, now right. and i really like that idea and you 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 just kind of inherently do that with right. with your car i guess so yeah. and every stuffed animal you've ever owned all day you should give them different names well, they were all dogs was the problem, and I like aspired to, I aspired to own a dog named Thatcher because like my godparents had a dog named Thatcher, and I was two, and I couldn't say the th sound, so oh, just kind of did you did you name the stuffed animals that before you got the dog? Well, yeah, my godparents had the dog, then I named a series of stuffed animals that, and then I got a dog and named it Thatcher. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, yeah so that, right, that, that's you. like you know that's like a I guess kind of like a family name at this point. Yeah. yeah, you have to name your next child Thatcher, <laughs> or my next car. Name my kid Audrey, my dog Toyota. <laughs> Just name everything Patcher. <laughs> uh, it worked for you, yeah. It worked yeah. for George Foreman. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, All right. Nat B84 asks How has your experience as a band differed from being on a relatively major label? Do you still consider yourselves DIY? We haven't considered ourselves DIY like you know, truly, truly DIY, probably ever. Um, well, I don't know if that's true, but I, it's been a while since we've, we've, uh, been like a super DIY band. I think we're, I would consider us more of like a DIT, like do it together band. Um, that's cool. I like that. Yeah. Like I, and as far as, as far as like operating in a band, I, uh, I really like doing it and I, but I don't, I don't really like booking the tours anymore. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that became such a time commitment after a while that it, it was kind of getting in the way of like all the fun stuff of being in a band. Um, I, so I, to answer the question, like, no, I don't, I don't consider ourselves a DIY band. Um, nor do I really, you know, mind if anyone considered us, considers us anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I do really enjoy it. And I think we operate in a pretty ethical way still. Nice. Um, yeah. And that always seems like the risk or like the ideal risk when like moving on to a, a semi-major label is like, mm-hmm. is it going to, you know, is the music going to like lose yeah. its soul or is it going to become like too influenced by, mm-hmm. you know, the corporate fat cats and their yeah. dinosaurs and whatnot? I mean, Side One Dummy also is not a, not really even a semi-major label. No. They're still, they're still a very independent label. Absolutely. And, um, and it's, yeah, they haven't really tried to get us to do to do anything outside of our comfort comfort zone mm. they just kind of bolster the things that we want to do mm. which is, uh, is super nice yeah that's awesome like, that's like every band should have that kind of support yeah and we're actually like we're more kind of more accessible to people like now that we that we have time to answer like emails from listeners more than uh, than just like the the business end of emails right. so it's actually kind of helped us like on that on that end uh, you know stay kind of in a good place. That's cool. It's kind of it's kind of counter counterintuitive. People would expect like you join a major label, you would like have less time for the fans or less time to do like all the cool stuff that you want to do. Yeah, totally. Oh, she likes the shout out to Side One Dummy. That's oh it. yeah, <laughs> love you, Side One Dummy. You guys are great. <laughs> and they're so they're so nice. Yay. <laughs> so much fun, so pretty. Yeah, we, I mean, we definitely yeah. have to give a shout out to Jamie. She's been like awesome just yeah. you know communicating with her she got I, I sent her a message after i found out that you guys signed to that mm-hmm. she got back to me in like 25 minutes yeah and i was just like hell yeah that's awesome let's do this i'm so <laughs> excited and i was like people don't usually return my emails if like, you had <laughs> sent me an email i probably would not have returned it at least for a long time <laughs> like I, I not that i don't want to but i i suck at, <laughs> i suck at that stuff like it's much cool like, it's much better for for our band to hire someone to do that stuff and mm. like, kind of organize it for us mm. So that we can like, you know, keep being a band and, and have lives outside of a band. Yeah, it's uh, I I really like I like it, and I'm I'm pretty happy that we uh, that we've gotten this far, like doing doing it ourselves, and mm-hmm. to the point where we now can like can hire people to do it for us when we want to. I um, mean that that growth has to feel awesome. Do you have a phone call? Well, Holy shit! Really uh, are we live right now? No. Oh, he tweeted oh. me. Oh, I, t- I tweeted him earlier in the day. Um, oh. What's up, Chris Fair? Wait, can, can I hold your can I hold your phone for a sec? Awesome. Um, uh, okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, Chris Farron tweeted out a fistful of vinyl. He says, "Ask Sean where he gets the courage to skateboard, and is he and if he is afraid of hurting his hand." Oh, oh like for playing guitar. That makes sense. I was yeah. like, "Do you have a particularly bad hand?" Or <laughs> um, I'm gonna knock on a piece of wood before I answer this question, <laughs> but. I will then answer it. 
Um, the, the, shelf. the shelf. Oh, piano. Nice. Oh. Good choice. Um, <laughs> well, Chris Farron. Um, the. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I speak pretty slowly sometimes. Um, oh, we're all good. I'm just caffeinated up. It's nice. Oh, do you guys have a coffee machine here? We used to. Too many people broke it too many times. Uh, harsh. Yeah, but my work has a Starbucks card that I get to you know use as much as I want of. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty great. Um, we do have coffee. I do down. get there's coffee downstairs. There. There's coffee downstairs. Cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, Brandon agrees. There's coffee downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, there totally is. <laughs> Uh-oh. Sorry, you don't sound like that, Brandon. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So the question, let me let me pull this up again. I want to make sure that I that I was, uh, all of it. Chris Farron asked, mm, "Where do you get the courage? Where do you get the courage to skateboard? And are you afraid of hurting your hand?" That dude's always supported the hell out of us. Like every yeah. time I tweet him, he answers like really personally and awesome. Yeah. Super good dude. Yeah, I, like I want to. I eventually want to like have him on the show, just so I could like hang out with him and like talk to him yeah. like this, because it seems like that'd be a really cool thing. Yeah, he's really, really great. Um, I I don't know where I get the, the. I don't think it's courage to skate. I think like I've just been doing it for so long that I I know my limits a little better. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, I am afraid that I'll hurt my hand, but I I don't think that's enough to to warrant giving up skateboarding, because I'm a lot happier when I get to skateboard. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that said, if I break my wrist, I will fall into a horrible spiral of depression, <laughs> but I'll eventually learn how to play guitar again. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even if I, even if I end up playing guitar differently, I'll still, I'll still play guitar just, just as much as I'll still skateboard. Yeah. Isn't it probably in the same way that like, you're going to discover a way to make it work because you love it. Yeah. And you'll probably correct me on this in a second, but wasn't it Bukowski who, who basically said, or maybe verbatim said, uh, find the things that you love and let them kill you. Mm. Hmm. That's a, that, I like that quote. That's kind of poignant, huh? Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I think, play, I think, play guitar to death. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I think every, every creative endeavor that a person does, like, you know, whether it be like drawing or skateboarding or anything you're passionate about, really, it doesn't even have to be creative, but, uh, I think passions kind of feed into themselves. Like I can have like a really, really kick-ass day skating and then, and then, tire my body out so much that my brain will like turn on and write a song like that night um you know i think it's all <laughs> it's so it's so cool man just the vibes and the auras <laughs> just been shredding that gnar Energy. yeah just shredding the gnar like just riding that riding that cement wave you know? <laughs> was it was Goodness it girl. was it bukowski by the way uh i don't know i think so awesome yeah there uh, you go. Where are you? hashtag alec read yeah. books <laughs> <laughs> i do good then <laughs> Um, let's see. Okay. What, um, so this, part- this question is from Reddit user, a fistful of vinyl KXLU. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do we know them? <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I've noticed sort of like this, uh, you know, the lineage of like people, people too, and then very tongue in cheek people too, too. Um, and kind of the philosophy that goes into them, it's, it seems very different until you kind of listen to all those songs back to back. And it basically kind of illustrates this idea of like people are like at their very core, like imperfect and at times like pretty crappy, Mm -hmm. but that's cool. How would you say, (laughs) how would you, how would you say that, you know, or I guess what's your own philosophy on like humanity as a whole and like, how does that come out in your music? Um, punching mics. Yeah. That's how. Well, first of all, F this mic. (laughs) Punk rock. For the radio. Um, (laughs) I, uh, I think people are inherently neutral and I think they should make a concerted effort to try to be good. And I, you know, I try to, I, you know, and I I fail at it a lot, but, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic. I'd consider myself an optimist. Like uh, a lot of the songs are like bummer songs, but that's cause I get to kind of purge myself of them. Mm -hmm. Um, Interesting. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the way it's kind of operated. Um, and th- that's that's also not really the sole the sole reason for the songs, but um, of those people songs, like for sure, um, those are those are like the times like I think I wrote people when I was really the first one, um, people one and new hope, um, when I was like super super bummed, mm-hmm. like I had a horrible night and I wrote that song, and then like a couple weeks later I had a really really great night, and I wrote the wrote bad bad things. <laughs> 
for a yeah. while it was like kind of flip flopped, and like now I now I write songs. Um, I, I give them a little more time. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't write them exactly when I'm feeling them. I really like the idea of you saying that uh, you know people people are neutral. And therefore, they have to like kind of put forth an effort to be good, or like it's important to like aspire towards being good. Yeah, and, and to be to be kind of taught to be good, mm-hmm. um, and it, to teach others to be good. I imagine in that same line. Yeah, um, I remember we saw you guys, and to not be dicks about it either. <laughs> <laughs> Surpri- like, uh, surprising, cool, yeah, yeah. surprisingly yeah, yeah. relevant. Check this out. You guys played <laughs> with Frank Turner, and one of my favorite lines of his that he ever wrote was in, um, oh God, what the hell is that song called? Uh, doesn't matter. Well, it matters, but I can look it up later and just like, I'll edit. How about I just move my lips and I'll, and I'll edit the song oh, yeah. in there. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, try this at home. Damn it. Um, the line is, uh, it's like right in the bridge and it says, there's no such thing as rock stars. There's just people who play music and mm-hmm. some of them are just like us and some of them are dicks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I love that line. Like it's that kind song. of for the reasons that you just expressed. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool and my question is isn't that cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally. if i if i wrote it it would be some of them are just like us and some of us are dicks <laughs> but uh, yeah yeah Sometimes. i just I, we just did a did a month-long tour with frank in europe and it was awesome nice was so much fun yeah frank was uh frank frank's been a hero of, of can i speak for you yeah please. frank's been a hero of ours for a long time he gets Sweet. pissed yeah, off when i put words good. in his mouth nice you guys should have him on the show too he would love this yeah, we, but we'd we, love to. <laughs> yeah, he's just been, he's a busy dude, it seems like. Yeah, he's yeah. got he's got yeah. really big. But totally. Coachella. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be awesome. Yeah. He's going to have tons of, you know, tweens and neon tank tops yelling for him. Yeah. Oh, that, that article was good today. <laughs> Bring the tweens. Bring the tweens. <laughs> Bring them on. Um, okay. What's on your... All right, so this is a question I love to ask all of our interviewers. Like, what's on your playlist right now? And what are some bands who you feel like uh, should be getting more attention? Oh man, um, let me look at my playlist right now. Awesome. Yeah. Let's see. Nobody else has bothered to pull out their I phone know. before. They're Usually just like, people are like, oh, man, I don't like, I don't really like music that much. Oh so. man. <laughs> the, I love that Authority that? Zero said that Authority Zero should be getting more attention. <laughs> Have you, yeah, have you seen the interview with Lil Wayne where they ask him what he's been listening to? Did he say Lil yeah, Wayne? Yeah, he goes, I'm going to be honest, I just listen to myself. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so in my top 25 most played... Yeah, got um, oh Perfume Genius. I've been listening to a ton of Perfume Genius lately. Okay. Uh, it's this guy uh, Mike from Seattle. Okay. Makes like this amazing, delicate, tragic, uh, you know, beautiful music. Um, they have a record called uh, "Put Your Back End to It." It's really good. Um, I just uh, kind of discovered. Discovered and rediscovered the uh, the second disc of the Headphone Masterpiece by Cody Chestnut. I think I've heard that either. I haven't either. I'm not. I was going to nod that? and pretend like I had, but John's <laughs> honesty inspired me to be honest. Well, check it out. Cody Chestnut made this record called the Headphone Masterpiece, mm-hmm. and he recorded it all at his house. Um, when at the time he was working for, uh, he was a producer for Death Row Records. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he made a he made like this lo-fi like neo soul R and B record that is just so amazing, super that good. That sounds awesome. And the second disc has has a lot of like has the best songs on it. Yeah. Eric Burden and uh, My Women, My Guitars. Um, Family on Blast is a really good song. Let's see, uh, Father John Misty. Awesome. Um, he played here my... not that long ago, didn't he? Yeah. 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 A lot of really? Yeah. yeah. On the on the show, like on case. No, not on our show. In, case, so yeah. I, yeah. Like in, in this room. Oh, cool. In this room, so. If you want to, his aura is. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll try still. to breathe in his vibes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like Danny Brown and Eminem, like two, cool. you know, two of Detroit's uh, Detroit's finest sons. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. I've been listening to the, to both of those a lot. The new Eminem record is pretty good. Yeah. Nice. Um, let's see. And oh, Dead Rider. They're this uh, this band from Chicago. Really like sexy. <laughs> That's a good quality to have in an Se- artist. Like sexy, <laughs> sexy, spooky, and creepy. They have like a. It's kind of groovy. <laughs> I'm now picturing like more, more adjectives misfits. with e at the end. No, no, I I don't know if there's any women in the band, but the bass lines are like doo 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 doo. Okay. Doo 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 and they're all done on like a keyboard. Cool. And there's there's like ah, ah, ah. it's like kind of breathy. Okay. I'm doing a really big <laughs> disservice to them by describing <laughs> Dead Rider right now. It's kind of breathy. Like we can't do yeah. that too. <laughs> really doing something to them. 
It's kind of squeaky. It's <laughs> not very good. A little squeaky, a little, little spacey, a little wavy. There's lots of kind of zony noise and stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's indescribable. That's that's kind of the that's the strength of Dead Rider. It's really good. Cool. <laughs> nice. What uh, about you guys? What you been pumping lately? Uh, um. Oh man, I've been doing I've been doing a lot of bomb the music industry. Uh, nice. They're one of my all time favorites. And then I just started listening to Jeff and Chris got together and did an album called or the, their act is called Antarctico Vespucci. It's kind of like a playoff on like Amerigo Vespucci. The, 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 just like the joke is that like anybody who discovers a continent <laughs> is named something <laughs> Vespucci and they name it after themselves. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, and it's like super That's poppy funny. and it's like kind of a guilty pleasure because it takes me back to like, you know, my middle school like, mm-hmm. yeah, days, but I'm, I'm digging it. Um, I'm listening to a lot of that. Uh, I love Josh Ritter. Uh, he's kind of a folky, um, is you know, he, lots of like Travis like style picking. Is he an actor too? Uh, John John Ritter was an actor John Ritter. and then died. Josh okay. Ritter wrote um, both there, right? And then there's oh, I was thinking Jason Ritter. Jason Ritter. He sounds like a serial killer. Kristen Ritter is the girl from Breaking Bad who spoiler alert is Jesse's girlfriend. I was going to do a bigger spoiler but oh, then yeah. I didn't. <laughs> She's also the B in That's apartment right. in apartment 23. That's true. That's true. So the Ritter I'm talking <laughs> about is none of them. Okay. Um, but no, he's super good. He's lyrically one of the like most interesting artists I've ever come across. Really? Um, cool. Yeah, I'll send you some of the stuff if you've never heard it before. It's sure. Like, That'd it's be great. pretty it's rad. What about you? Um, I've been listening to lots of pretentious noise music recently for the last like few weeks. Yeah, I love that stuff. Um, so I've been listening to... Well, so I... Today, actually, and yesterday, I was listening to a lot of Duster and Slow Dive. I don't know if you listened to any of that slow core stuff from the early 90s. No, You're no, no. Really. Sorry. <laughs> um, both, of them are, both of them are with Wild. Uh, Duster is, like, a little bit heavier. They're sort of like proto shoegaze, I guess. Okay, um, cool. Lots of empty space, airy, sort of like you were saying. Nice. Um, and Slow Dive is good. They make pretty, they make the same sort of music, but, like, real sad. Um, but then I've also been listening to a lot of, his name is Anthony Cantonini, the guy from Nine Inch Nails who does DJ work for them. Oh, cool. He just put out a new record last year that's all recorded on analog noise thing. So he uses like a Moog and he has a bunch of oscillators and sweet. He made a cool record and I've listened to a lot of like One of Tricks Point Never and Christian Marclay, who is famous for doing that lack the video that was the LACMA that was like the twenty four hour movie mm-hmm. where he cut to he spliced together all those movies with the clocks in the background. Okay. Well, he he's his, making a lot of these up. <laughs> just <laughs> off the top of my head. He does, he does this cool thing that, uh, that I like a lot that I've tried to replicate recently where he takes vinyl records and uses sandpaper to scratch them down into like different beats. Oh, uh, I've And heard then that. he plays yeah. like 12 of them at once. Whoa. And he composes songs out of like basic sampling that way. Mm-hmm. So that kind of music, I guess, mostly. And I've been listening to all of, just like all of Maya's Mouse. They've been on my yeah. Isaac Brock has been back on my playlist recently. Last mass hella good. Yeah, super yeah, super <laughs> sick. Uh, oh, I wanted to give shout outs. Uh, more you know the shout outs to the ins- people. Yeah. Instead of bands that I think, you know, aren't getting enough attention, I think there's bands that that are really worth attention, and they are getting some attention, but they could always you know, if, if it's a band, like all, more attention is always welcome. Mm-hmm. Make the question what you want it to be. Yeah, we're going on tour uh, pretty soon with uh, Cheap Girls and Dog Breath, and then. After that, we were going on tour with Hard Girls and Dog Breath. When is this uh, this getting posted? Um, um, May fifth. Uh, somewhere between now and May fifth. Oh, yeah. I well, don't know. In the interviews coming. I think out. We're, yeah. Check by the time out, by probably. the time this airs, you will have, you know if you're listening to this, you probably already know that we're touring with Cheap Girls, <laughs> Hard Girls, and Dog Breath. Um, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll try to time the you know maybe this is like the big announcement. It's like you heard it first on a fistful of vinyl. They're touring with Dog Breath twice, <laughs> <laughs> and two different kinds of girls. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be cheap and hard. <laughs> it's gonna smell like a puppy. Nice. <laughs> um, also, Treasure Mammal is like the best band in the world. <laughs> Treasure Mammal. They're, worth, they're worth a Google. They're worth a Google. <laughs> Wink. I like that. Um, Where are they from? Uh, Phoenix. Okay, cool. Oh, somebody wanted me to ask you about the uh, like the Phoenix Tempe music scene and like what you think of it. Oh, I love it. Cool. It's uh, I mean, it's really spread out. Like, there's a lot of kind of scenes under the big umbrella of the Phoenix Metro area. Um, which is a uh, is I think kind of cool because it it's a uh, it's not not as clicky as you might imagine. Mm-hmm. Like you know you can kind of float freely between all these like amazing things that people are doing. Um, 
yeah, I, I freaking love it. The music scene, the art scene there is really nice. The um, you know, the cockfighting scene is really good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just kidding. There's good money in that if you know you'll know what to look for. What do you think paid for our van? <laughs> <laughs> Just come chicken, on, razor nails. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, Viewers like you paid for our van. <laughs> thank you, thank you, everybody that paid for our van. Thank you for contributing <laughs> to our cockfighting ring. Do you have any, do you have any more questions? I should probably we should probably wrap this kind of soon. It's been. Yeah. Do you guys remember that time we did an interview? Dude, that was my favorite. That was, that was my favorite was so part cool. of that interview. <laughs> <laughs> that was my question. Oh, I wanted to ask you, uh, <laughs> really what, awesome. what's your favorite joke? Uh, yeah. My favorite joke? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, God. I, I don't know if I have one. There's a joke that, that, uh, that I could quote verbatim from this really amazing comic from Ohio that, uh, that performs at open mics and, or that, that like, kind of performs in the Midwest that I see a lot. Yeah. Um, but I can't remember his friggin' name. <laughs> and I want to credit him with the joke if I tell it. I'll just put it in a caption. and I'll do like a bottom third once I learn how to work Adobe <laughs> Premiere. No, I'll, I'll, I'll do a different one. I'll do... Um, actually, this one's good. Um, how many skateboarders does it take to screw in a light bulb? How, how many? Three. Why? One to do it, one to film it, and one to go, oh, that was sick. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. That's I think that's my favorite joke. That's the one I've I've told the most. <laughs> it's the one I can remember. <laughs> that is that is a really good one. I like that one. Um Did you have you landed any sick tricks recently on your skateboard? Yeah, man. Every day. <laughs> Duh, all the time. <laughs> you know my first email address was mick.twister at Verizon.net. Sweet. Yeah. It was back when I, it was yeah. back when I thought I could skateboard. I played a lot of Tony Hawk back then. We all did, I'm sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I started um, playing that skate game. That one was yeah, cool. is incredible. Yeah. yeah, but then it became for me it became a challenge of like how many bones could I break in one crash, and That's, like yeah. I eventually won and broke all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this game's boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's many games in one. EA skate, really like yeah, versatile game. <laughs> it's not as good. Well, okay, wait. So you're into video games then? Um, kind a little of? bit. Maybe? Like well, I I, uh, I I went down the the Skyrim wormhole. Oh yeah, man, and played Skyrim for a long time, and then kind of got into Fallout Three. Which I, uh, super fun game. Yeah, Fallout's one of my um, absolute favorites. New Vegas, like, played it three times and I'm still not tired of it. I think that's the one I'm probably going to try to play next. Do it. Cool. Yeah, Do it. Because it's, it's like, yeah, it's like Fallout 3, but it takes place in a, in a part of the country that I that I know better and, and like a lot. Yeah, you get to like visit, The like, American Southwest. Yeah, you get to visit Cabazon and, like, there's... Prim, Prim is there. Yeah, Prim is there. Um, yeah, but there's a dude that hangs out in the giant creationist T-Rex's mouth that you can, like go and talk to him and it's like man that's cool every time i drive to palm that's springs i'm like i wonder if boone's in there <laughs> awesome <laughs> yeah um anything else um do you have so are there any other mediums that have been big influences on your music it just as a quick aside like things like movies you said or oh like yeah other pieces of art or whatever that you'd like to like give shout outs to or something or totally. do you think are worth my time? Um, there's this really great documentary that kind of got me thinking about about things in, in interesting terms called um, "Beauty is Embarrassing," hmm. and it's about it's a documentary about this artist named Wayne White. He's actually based in L.A. Um, he was he was an animator. Sub Wayne. <laughs> yeah, hey Wayne White, you're cool. He he was on Pee Wee's Playhouse. Okay. And then he did uh, he did some music videos like uh, t- the Tonight Tonight music video by Smashing Pumpkins was yeah. him. Okay. Um, and then he got into just doing fine art and like painting, and uh, I, I love the way he does things, like just the way, yeah. His his kind of take on creativity is super inspiring. Um, so he that's been that's been like getting me pumped lately. Uh, books, just kind of in general. Uh, books. I read a lot of yeah, all the books. Stuff with all these books. <laughs> just read a really cool book about uh, Charles Manson, Jeff Gwynn's Manson. Uh-huh. Um, you know that that. Uh, let's see. Suzanne Falk, the painter that painted Christmas Island, she's like one of my one of my big one of the the big people I look up to um, artistically. Cool. And, uh, yeah, those shout outs. Did okay. it. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> so I found something funny today, and I thought it'd be a cool way to end the interview and transition into the performance. Yeah. So I wanted to read from your kick, your crowdfunding. Was it Kickstarter the crowdfunding um, campaign? No, it was uh, Indiegogo. Indiegogo. I don't get them confused. Mm-hmm. Um, for twenty five hundred dollars, Sean will totally fly out and play a private show for you. You can invite whoever you want. You can invite no one, but he'd prefer you invited someone. 
We didn't invite anyone and we don't have $2,500, but do you want to play a show? Sure, why not? Hell yeah. <laughs> um, okay. This has been a Fistful of Vinyl on KXLU 88.9 FM Los Angeles. You, do you want to say this? You should say this. Hey, this is Sean Bonnet from Andrew Jackson Jihad. You are listening to a Fistful of Vinyl on KXLU 88.9 FM in Los Angeles. Awesome. Um, thanks a lot for the interview, man. This has been like yeah, so much fun. This is cool. I'm glad you guys had a good time. Um, yeah, let's get the let's get the performance set up. Sure. sure. Fuck yeah. Ah. <laughs> I can cuss again. Yeah. <laughs> F yeah. this shit. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna go take a whiz. I I've been here before. I came here like we played we played on the air at like midnight or something <laughs> or after midnight. Uh, about seven years ago. I came across, we were talking about this earlier actually, I came across, it's on, it's right, there's a recording of you on one of your records. So like, thanks KXU. Oh, I hadn't heard it before today. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Cool. Yeah. Oh, this is Ooh. where I'm Oh, oh. Sean, oh. so, I brought you a present. Oh, fuck yeah, this is awesome, thanks. Yeah. Ooh. I took some fire with it. All right, um, do you have any out there? Are you going to shut the door? I had a, I had a kick something in the hoodie for the Probably. longest time. Probably. I mean, I all the sounds going to be coming from me now. Last time. Yeah, as long as I can hear it. Oh, Smile. You have any questions, right? Yeah. You feel ready? Uh, yeah, I had a piece of paper. Oh, you can get flashy with it. <laughs> you make it. You make the sound on the microphone. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Which on the cold night for a Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, so if, if you guys, like, <laughs> my God. Uh, around there, uh, like a there, coffee shop downstairs, if you want, like, grab coffee, there's totally tea over there. The, like, live performance where they make music out of random shit. Oh. Not all. Not all. No, I mean, it's not all. Yeah, I don't really, you know, I don't really like galvanize the whole thing. It's awful. Okay. And, so yeah, what else and did there's you also like before you came here. Room fulls of records. And yeah, um, so like, in the morning yeah. we did. Yeah. I did so interviews. we're uh, good okay. to go. We're good to go. I've started rolling. Okay. Um, oh, cool. And uh, if there's any technical errors on my part, I'll let you guys know. I'll flag you down, and we can kind of pick up from wherever we left off. That's cool. Um, but yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you have a clock? I have a watch. No, we don't have any. I, I get one on my wrist. I got a. I got a phone. Uh, exactly seven right now. Nice. Got a phone. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Got one it's of those. It's a new age of you. Yeah. It's all the time too. <laughs> it's kind of its only purpose. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, what was that? Forgetting Sarah Marshall. It's like, yeah, man. Ever since I moved here, I stopped wearing a watch. Yeah, I got I got one right on my phone. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Let's do this. I think oh. it's good that it's appropriate in... Yeah. Oh, you just have a cup for, for water? Oh, like totally. Can, That's like a nice thing like for us to offer. Do you want that? Tea? Just, yeah. Whoa. You want tea? Water and tea. Bring it on. Right. Thank you. <laughs> hydrate, dehydrate. Yeah. <laughs> Double fist in. Yeah, man. Get me... Get me hydrated. All mixed up. Yeah. Put that liquid in me. <laughs> <laughs> You're made of so much of it. Yeah. I hope the yeah, I hope the live performance goes okay. My throat's a little not not as shredded as, as it's been, you know, at, at shows and stuff. Yeah, right. It's been I've been talking a whole lot. <laughs> and you guys played a long time yesterday. Yeah, yeah, we played a long fucking time yesterday. Did you get all the way through yeah. the record? Yeah. Sick. That's it fucking was, cool. That was our first time playing those songs as a five piece like yeah, since right. we recorded it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but it turned out good. Like we we've all been listening to the, the record a bunch and you know, still still excited about the songs. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That's probably a good feeling. Right? Yes. To make music that is like still sick after it's been recorded. Yeah. I mean I think I think also it has something to do with the fact that it hasn't been released yet. Oh yeah, um, sure. Like this is this is the time that I get to enjoy it. Yeah, right. And after it's and after it's out of the world. Then I I don't have to hate it, but I have to start thinking about what's next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but the the enjoyment period for this record since it took so long to like kind of get put out. Um, what? Open the door. Don't tell me what to do. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> These two are yours. One of them's really hot. Cool. I'll we'll find out in a second. Oh yeah. That's the Oh, wait, hold on. Green tea. Oh, cool, thanks. <laughs> Hell yeah, tight. That's the best interview ever. You got water, you got our tea. 
You guys do your vocal warm ups? <sighs> I was thinking about interviewing you in falsetto the entire time. I've just taken to sounding like shit as a character trait, so. <laughs> <laughs> like man, that guy has no tunnel control. Ah, <laughs> that's his thing. It's endearing. <laughs> it's his bit. It's a bit. Where is she? Damn it. <laughs> All right, Brandon, we good? Did he say yes? He said we good. Awesome. Awesome. Then he did this. Roger, you were nice. The self fist bump. Confident. Good <laughs> yeah. style. Cool. Um, <laughs> Trivia. Yeah. Cool. Sure. 